Welcome back and thank you for joining me on my last video in this series. We have come to the end of looking at the three financial statements which are core to your business financials, the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. We have considered what they are and how they benefit you and we've looked at the reports provided by Sage Intelligence which cater for them. Seeing as this is our last video, I'm going to start off by providing a recap of the three statements and how they fit together. The income statement is used to show how much money you've made in a given period. It does so by comparing your revenue from selling your products or services with both the expenses used to provide those products or services and those needed to run your business. By tracking your profitability over time, you'll be able to tell whether it is increasing or decreasing and more specifically whether this is due to rising or falling sales or costs. Having this information will help you decide whether you need to look at ways of increasing your sales or cutting your costs. The purpose of the balance sheet is to show the financial position of your business at a given point in time and is usually drawn up at the end of a period. It gives the state of your accounts and tells you what your business owns in the form of assets and what it owes in the form of owner's equity and liabilities. It seeks to show that what your business owns is directly financed by the money that has been invested and the money that has been borrowed. This is the accounting equation. If your assets do not equal your owner's equity plus liabilities, then it is an indication that mistakes have been made in your accounting process. Whereas your income statement tells you how much money you've made during a given period, it doesn't actually tell you how much cash has come into or gone out of your business during that period. Knowing this is important because it allows you to determine how much money you have available to pay your bills. As I'm sure you know, although you may have a great product or service that sells well, if you can't pay your suppliers on time, then they're not going to want to do business with you. And if you can't afford the necessary facilities to run your business, it will make things much more difficult. The cash flow statement allows you to keep track of your cash flows summarized by your operating, investing, and financing activities. By knowing how much cash you have on hand and by keeping an eye on the different movements, you'll be able to take the necessary measures to ensure your cash flow is adequate and provision for your payments appropriately. Let's now move on to some of the other features and functionality in Sage Intelligence. Near the end of my third video, I mentioned that you could rename reports. If you remember, I set up an instance of the Report Designer report to show my balance sheet layout with some formatting changes in my company logo. I'm now going to give it a more appropriate name to better identify it. To do this, select the report you want to change and then on the Home tab, click Rename. A dialog will appear where you can enter the new name. I'm going to call mine Financial Report Designer Balance Sheet. Once you click OK, you'll be given some options that have to do with the report's template. By selecting the first one, a copy of the template will be made and given the same name that you have entered for the report. Then if the old version isn't being used by another report, it will be deleted. This will make sure that unused templates aren't left on your machine. The second option will leave the existing template as is and just rename the report. The last one will create a copy of the template and give it the new name but will leave the old version on disk. Select this one if you want to hold on to it for future use. I don't want to change my template so I'm going to select the second option. You can see the report update in the object window with the template left unchanged. When I first started working with the product, I spent time playing with the report manager and the two financial reports and investigated the information in them. I encourage you to do the same. There were times when I had specific questions and I found the product's help file invaluable. It includes comprehensive information on almost all intelligence reporting topics. It's well written and is easy to follow. You can access it in the Report Manager by going to the Help tab and selecting View Help. Once it opens, you can use the menu on the left to navigate to the particular topic you want or use the search bar near the top right to find it. You can also access help from within the Report Designer and I'm going to show you how to do this using my Balance Sheet report. 
To save some time, and since I'm sure you know by now how to run out reports, I've already opened it. Both the Layout Generator and the Task Pane have Help icons in their different tabs. By clicking on the question mark, the Help file will open. Depending on your Sage product, this may be context sensitive. So, for example, if you have the Layouts tab selected in the Task Pane and click the icon there, the Help file will open on that topic. This makes it easy for you to get right to the information you need. Once I had my reports set up the way I wanted, I needed to be able to share the information in them with the stakeholders of my business. I am sure this is a common requirement in any company. I remembered from the Getting Started guide that intelligence reporting has its own distribution feature, and I also recalled seeing a video on it in the YouTube playlist for my product. So I went back there and watched it. It gave me a good idea of how it works. Distribution is provided in all Sage Intelligence reports and allows you to share the information in them either by using email, saving to a folder on your computer or remote location, or by publishing to a file transfer site. You only have to set up your options once and they can be reused across all your reports. It takes the hassle out of saving and attaching workbooks using your normal email program to give you an idea, I'm going to show a demonstration of it by sending my balance sheet layout to one of my colleagues. His name is George. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because you can watch the video yourself or read about the tool in the help file. The options for it are found on the BI Tools tab in a report. They include Send Now, Select Instructions, Manage Instructions, and Distribution Settings. When working with them, you need to use them in reverse order, so I'm going to start with the last one. Distribution settings is where you select the mail server settings you want to use if you're going to send by mail. If you use Microsoft Outlook, then you can choose the first option and the settings will be taken from there. Otherwise, you'll need to enter the details for your own mail server. We can now move on to the next item, which is Manage Instructions. This is where you decide how you want your report to be sent, whether by email, file publish, or FTP. The set of options you choose are called an instruction, and you can have more than one in case you have different requirements. For example, I have an instruction which I use to send my financial reports to my accountant, and others which I use to send other reports to the managers in my sales and services teams. I'm going to add one and give it the name Send to George. Once the window opens, you'll see the different tabs for the different methods of distribution at the top. I'm going to use the first one and enter the necessary details. This is similar to typing up a normal email in your email program. When using this option, the report is added to the mail as an attachment and sent to the recipient. I'm going to check the box to enable the option and enter the address of the person I want to send to, which in this case is George. I'll then enter a subject and some text for the body. A file name needs to be added, which is the name that will be given to the attachment, and then I can choose the format I would like it to be sent as. I'm going to leave it as Excel Workbook. I have the option to send the information as static values or to keep the formulas that are used in the layouts. If you'd like your recipients to be able to do things like edit the report headings and have the data update or see how the different values are calculated, then uncheck this. Note that in this case, the people you send the report to will need to have intelligence reporting installed on their machines in order for any report designer functionality to work. I'm going to leave it checked. This also allows me to send each worksheet as a separate document, but I'm not going to worry about this. I can then click OK. The next distribution option is Select Instructions. This allows you to pair each instruction with different sheets in your workbook. I'm not interested in sending the first two as part of this example, but I do want to send the balance sheet, so I'm going to check it. Lastly, I can click on Send Now, and all selected instructions will be executed. George received the email, and I asked him to forward it to me so that I can show it to you. If I open the original, you can see it has the text I entered and the report attached in an Excel format. 
Through the use of the Windows Task Scheduler, Sage Intelligence also lets you schedule the distribution of your reports. This is useful because as we've seen by looking at the financial statements, they will likely need to be generated and shared on a regular basis, probably according to your accounting period. Using this feature will save you time and hassle because you only have to set up your schedule once. Your reports will then be sent out on time without you having to worry about it again. A video on this can also be found on your YouTube channel and information is also included in the help file. Before coming to a close, the last thing I want to do is share some of the other resources that are available to you to find more information and take your report skills further. I'm going to go back to the kickoff document. In case you can't remember how to get to it, from the Sage Intelligence homepage, click on Learning and Resources and then click the kickoff option. Scroll down and select the accounting product and then version and the kickoff document will load. The next item in it is the webcast program. Several intelligence reporting webcasts are provided for each Sage product each month dealing with topics from beginner level to advanced. The page lists the upcoming webcasts and you can register for them. For convenience, you can also subscribe to the program. By doing so, you'll receive a monthly email listing the upcoming webcast with links to register for each one. They are usually around 40 minutes to an hour long and are a great way to learn about specific topics. You'll also get to meet some of the great people who work at Sage Intelligence and be able to ask them any questions you may have. Next on the list is the Sage Intelligence Academy. I mentioned this in the last video. The Academy provides a number of paid-for courses on both Intelligence Reporting and Microsoft Excel, from beginner to advanced level. Some introductory ones are provided free of charge and are a good way to whet your appetite when starting out. Others on the Financial Report Designer are also provided for some Sage products and new courses are being added on a regular basis. The Academy provides convenience and then you can learn in your own time, at your own pace, in the leisure of your own workspace, and in a fun and friendly way. The next link to check out is the Sage Intelligence Community. Although you got a look at it when I showed you the Getting Started Guide and Report Descriptions, I want to talk about two of the other sections it includes. The first is Webcasts. When one is given, it is recorded and then listed on the community according to the product it relates to. So if you forgot to register for one or are looking for a specific topic that may have been done in the past, take a look here. The second section is the forum. Here you can ask questions and add to discussions about Sage Intelligence. This is great if you're battling to find information or have a unique query. It's frequented by a large number of intelligence reporting users, so chances are someone will have the answer. Your questions may have been asked before, and you can also use the search bar at the top of the page to search for past discussions on them. To be able to post on the forum, you'll need to sign up. This is quick and easy, and you can do so by clicking on the link also at the top of the page. The last item on the kickoff are the details for SAGE support. If you have a technical problem with intelligence reporting or have not been able to find an answer on the forum, then get in touch using the details provided and the helpful support staff will give you a hand. You should have more than enough information now to get started with SAGE intelligence and I'd like to leave you to get going with it yourself. Before ending off, let's take a look at all that we've covered. In the first video, I introduced myself to you and shared my goal of getting a deeper understanding of my business financials. After learning about Sage Intelligence and getting up and running myself, I wanted to share my knowledge and experience to make this as easy as possible for you. To start out with, I took you to the Sage Intelligence website and learning and resources page and showed you where to find the kickoff document for your Sage product. Using the kickoff, we looked at some of the introductory material provided on the community and the videos available on the YouTube channel. I also showed you the report utility, which you can use to download free reports. From there, I opened up the Report Manager, located the Financial Report Designer report, and imported the Cash Flow report using the utility. 
I also taught you some of the basic report manager functions by placing copies of the reports into a folder of their own. In the second video, we focused on the first financial statement being the income statement. I explained what it is and how it is used, and we took a look at an example of one. I then ran out the financial report designer report from the report manager. While doing so, I explained how Sage Intelligence works by extracting information from your company database and adding it to an Excel workbook. I then generated the different income statement layouts included in the report and explained their structure and the information they contain. Following on from the income statement, we took a look at the balance sheet. In the same way, I gave an overview of what it is and how it works, and we looked at a sample of one. I then opened up the report designer report I had saved to my desktop, generated the balance sheet layout from the task pane, and discussed it. After that, I provided some extra information. I first showed you how to change your layout settings, and then how Sage Intelligence uses templates. I showed you how you can customize them to meet your needs and save your changes back to your reports. In the fourth video, we looked at the cash flow statement. In it, I discussed what cash flow is, how the cash flow statement reports on it, and also looked at a sample of one. I then ran out my cash flow report from the report manager and discussed the layouts and information it provides. Now, in this last video, I started by providing a summary of the three financial statements and how they fit together. I wanted to show you a few of the other important intelligence reporting features, so I went back to the report manager, explained how to rename reports, and we took a look at the help file. Then working from my balance sheet, I gave an example of how distribution works and also talked about scheduling it. Lastly, I have shared with you the rest of the resources that you can find on the kickoff document, including the webcast program, Sage Intelligence Academy, Community, and Sage Support Details. We have now come to the end of this series. We have covered a lot, but I think it has been fun, and I'd like to thank you for joining me on this journey. I really hope that it will make getting started with Sage Intelligence a smooth and fulfilling experience, and that it will help take your reporting and business to new heights. Keep in mind that not everything in intelligence reporting is the same across all Sage products. So the details of what I've shared from my accounting package may not be identical to those in yours. In case you have any further questions, I've provided the contact details of the support teams for each product, so get in touch with yours if you need to. Keep an eye out for more in the future, as this is not the only series I plan to do, and as I learn more myself, I'll be sure to share my knowledge and experience with you. Good luck with getting your reports up and running, which will, of course, save you time that you can spend on growing your business or any of the other things you love to do. Until then, keep well and goodbye.